Hey there, it's Miss Liz with LVA. I have a lesson for you today in printmaking, my favorite thing to do. Um, we are going to be printing with vegetables and we are going to be making mandalas, um, circles of meditation. Really excited about this today. We're going to talk about color, we're going to talk about shapes, we're going to talk about size of shapes and patterning. So you will need a sheet of paper. I would go bigger than eight and a half by 11. Um, if you have 11 by 17 or is it 12 by 18 paper, that would be wonderful. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You are going to need vegetables. So you'll need to ask for vegetables. I grabbed celery, carrot, onion, and potato. Um, if you need help slicing them, please get that help. And then I also have watercolor paints. Now I didn't have one of those beautiful little trays that I bet you guys have at home. So I had to use my tubes of watercolor. Um, these are from college and they're over 30 years old. I know, kind of crazy, but it's time to use them up. Um, and yeah, be freaked out that it's been over 30 years, but man, art supplies, once you invest in them, they, they are good to go. I've got some water and I've got some paint brushes. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our paper. Here's my 11 by 17 or 12 by 18. And um, gosh, doing a circle on this is gonna be a lot more challenging than doing it on a square. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fold our paper, we're gonna take one corner and fold it on the diagonal, okay? What am I doing? I'm creating a square piece of paper. What? And then this residual or remnant, I'm just gonna cut off. And I'm cutting it by hand. Eyeballing it is good. I think that's great. And then I'm gonna save this little sheet of paper because it will become um, kind of a palette if I need to do some uh, practice stamping. Okay, I'm gonna open my paper. Now I had um, I had thought about different ways to get us going on on getting that circular shape, and I realized we have a diagonal fold. So what I want you to do is open your paper up and fold it on the other diagonal. Okay. Those creases are going to become your guidelines. And I actually found it easier to flip it and use the uh, folds kind of popping up a little bit. Okay, so I chose celery and I just sliced it pretty straight. Okay, but then on the other end, look at that. It had three little pieces. So I thought, oh, I'm totally using that. With my carrot, I sliced it, but I didn't do this wonderful smooth job, but I'm okay with that. I sliced my potato. Now you can see I've already used these for my samples. Here's one that's that not been used. And then I sliced my onion. I sliced my onion so it had a full circle. And then the other side, it, yes, it had a full circle, but I sliced it then again in half. Okay, and when you um, get these vegetables, um, like the potato and the onion are gonna have a lot of water in it. They're, they, they've got water in them as they're growing and, and um, they're, it's really great to have that moisture in there for cooking, but with printing, um, sometimes that water can get in the way. I use them wet on my sample, but um, I let them dry out. I've been letting them sit for a couple of hours. And what's going to happen is there's going to be more patterning and more texture showing up in these prints. Okay? So now, color. Um, like I said, I've had tubes, so I squeezed out different colors. All right? So I'm going to put my paintbrush in the water and I'm going to wake up my yellow paint and my brush is gonna roll away from me. And I actually uh, had two different yellows going. Oh, I know what I had. I had an orange going. So what I did was I took some red, which is a big old blob over here, 
and I mixed it with the yellow to create the red I wanted. I didn't have, uh, I mean an orange I wanted. I didn't have an orange tube that I wanted to use and I love mixing colors. So I don't have a problem with creating them if I need to. Let's see if I can move these over for you. Um, I have a red. Okay. I'm just kind of waking it up. I like using, oh, why did I choose watercolors? Well, I didn't want to use acrylics because once you get those on your hands and on your clothing, it doesn't come off. And I didn't have any tempera paints at home, so couldn't use them. Um, and I had watercolors. And I've done it with watercolors before, and I like that you can mix the colors. And I like that um, the water in the paint kind of gets gets the um, texture of the plant to show up, texture of the vegetable to show up, okay? So then I also had a blue, and my water's already dirty. Oh, so when you fill waters, you wanna fill it halfway. And um, from all my years of teaching my students, I would go, why are we filling it halfway? And, and they would say, because if you spill it, you only spill half as much. And that's my rule. Now this one's a little bit, uh, has a little bit more for the demo, but only fill your water container half. If it spills, half as much to clean up and everybody's a little happier. Now you couldn't see this, um, but here's a purple. I had mixed a purple as well. And these are old cookie trays. I just figured why not use them? I think it makes it a little bit harder for you to see what's going on. I apologize for that, but um, we're at a time where we're, we're making art with the things that we have at home, okay? So now I have my sheet of paper. I have, oh, I had a green too. That's what my other brush was for. Gosh, okay, I've got a lime green. And um, I wanted to have a variety of colors to work with. Um, and I want to be able to repeat those colors in my design. So that's why I have them mixed up. And then um, once I've put a color on my vegetable, it pretty much has to stay that color until the, the paint dries on it, okay? So this was orange. Actually, let's be fancy. I'm gonna use my new potato. Woo! And it's oval shaped, but it's got this little star in the center that might show. And I'm gonna start out by using the blue, okay? And I'm just painting the blue on. And I'm not globbing it on, I'm not puddling it on, I'm just getting it all over, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it like halfway up my, the X, the folded line, okay? And I then print it. Okay, and, and gosh, I printed without talking to you about the printing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint it back on, and I'm gonna take my potato, and I'm gonna put it on the fold line, the creased line. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna do that. And it's gonna be about equidistant from the center as the other one. Now notice, I'm kinda rocking and rolling my potato back and forth. And I put a piece of cardboard underneath so that I've got a little bit of cushioning. Now there's still a little bit of paint on here. So I'm gonna do my other folded edge and I'm gonna rock and roll. And oh my gosh, it looks different, but I love it. Okay, we aren't going for everything looking exactly the same. We're using natural materials. We're using potatoes, we're using onions. It is okay if things look a little bit different. We're relying on creating a pattern that actually helps um, create the familiarity in the group. As you can tell, I can't print and talk very well at the same time, okay? So then I did two more. And if you can kind of imagine, I'm gonna put another one here and another potato there, and I'm gonna end up with a circle, okay? And I'm applying a little more paint. And so notice, I'm not really messy about this. 
I'm not really messy because you make a mess, you have to clean up a mess. So I really like staying as clean as possible. And then ta-da, that is my first ring of my mandala. I'm gonna do some rings on the inside and do the outside, but this is my guiding one, okay? Now, did you notice um, I made a, a, a mistake? So if you look at this potato right here, this print, it's, it's lining up differently than the other ones. How upset am I? Not really, because human nature, I'm gonna, this is just one little part of the design, and as I work on it, you're not really even gonna see that. And so that's why the variation in the printing is A-OK, -okay. all right? So I've got my yellow on, I mean, I've got my blue on there. I think I would like to put some yellow. This yellow is kind of bright, but I'm gonna dig it, that's okay. Um, and since this is a big shape, I'm gonna do a smaller shape. So here is my celery, and I've got that beautiful U shape. So again, I'm gonna get my paintbrush wet, and I'm gonna kinda control it. There's some water on there, all right? And then I'm gonna rock and roll it below. Can you see that? And then I still feel like there's enough paint that I'm gonna rock and roll it. And I'm putting this yellow shape in between, gosh, I got a lot of paint on this brush, dripping all over the place. Um, I'm putting it in between each of the blue potato prints, okay? And I'll hold it up in a second, I just wanna get another amount on, okay? And so what happens is we're, we're creating a repetition in the round, okay? I'm digging it, I'm digging it. Okay, now, um, why am I painting? I'm painting it on because I can get a smoother layer. I could also take some paint, hopefully you can see this, yeah, you can. And I'm gonna make a little puddle to the side of my blob, and blob is a technical term. And I'm gonna just put my um, celery in it, and you're gonna see it gets pretty saturated pretty fast. And then I'm going to, well, let's just put some on the inside, okay? What happens is, is there's a lot of water happening right there. So um, I don't necessarily like the puddle happening on the paper, okay? So that's why I paint it on. Sometimes when I feel I can control the paint, I will just stamp. But man, this is looking like a nice flower. Okay, I'm gonna stamp, because I don't wanna take the time. Ooh, and I'm getting the next round in, okay? So it repeated that um, celery shape, and I'm pretty psyched about it, okay? And I've got a yellow, and I've got a blue, and I'm feeling, I think I want that purple happening. Um, I had blue on this before. I'm just going to take a little bit of water and remove some of that color. How upset am I going to be if I have a little bit of blue in my purple? Not at all, because there is blue in purple. That was a trick question. Okay. Um, I hope I have enough of this too. So here is my purple. It's going to be pretty light because I think there's a bunch of water there. Okay. And I'm just going to put it, rock and roll it to the side. Yep, I can see the blue in there. Okay. And it'll, it'll take a couple of stampings to get that blue out of it. But I'm kind of digging it because um, it sits really nicely with the blue. Oh my gosh, I must put blue on there. Did you see that? Yeah, it's kind of watery. 
But what's happening is my purple shape is touching my blue shape. So it's kind of creating a relationship between them and um, it's making it a, feel a little bit more connected. So there's my purple. All right. And now I want to repeat. Okay, I'm going to repeat my color. I've repeated my shape. I repeated the celery. But now I'm going to repeat the color. And I'm going to put one, two, three. Ah! Come back in here and do a fourth. Okay? And I'm putting that down. So now I've got this happening. And now I feel like, oh my gosh, that purple is a little strong. And I've got all these smaller things happening. So now I'm going to think larger. And I have been letting this onion sit out. And I really want to see what it's going to be. And I love lime green. So I am going to paint the lime green on. Now, I let this onion sit out a little bit, so what's happening is it is soaking up the water in the paint. And then I'm going to put it... Ah, where am I putting it? Above the purple. Okay, and I'm rocking and rolling a little bit. Oh, look! This little onion has a handle for me. Okay? And I put the green on. That is the wussiest green I have seen in a long time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of this yellow to my puddle of green. Okay. Clean off my brush a little bit. And I'm going to come over to that blue and I'm going to grab that blue. Wow, that is a green. It's not a lime green anymore, people. It's more like a grass green. Now what happens is these onions really want to fall apart pretty quickly, especially when they get dried out. But I've done some onion prints where I saved my onions from day to day for about a week. So I would wrap them and put them in the fridge and then um, take them out and print. Oh yeah, that's groovy, man. That's totally groovy. Okay, then I'm gonna come over here Let's see if I can get two prints out of it. Oh, that's even better. It's even better, people. Okay. I hope it's not too annoying that I'm holding the, the piece of paper up to the screen. It's really funny trying to do a video by yourself. Um, but I don't necessarily want someone in here while I'm doing this because I want to focus on teaching. Okay, purple. I'm going to move my piece of paper, stamp, stamp. It's important to say stamp while you're doing this. I don't know why, but for some reason I want to. Oh, another reason I like to use the watercolor paints is if I'm mixing colors, it's really easy to recreate a color. I'm putting it here because I feel like it. And then I know where it's going to go again. Oh, wow. So the cardboard is actually showing a little bit of ridge work. I don't like that as much. I just couldn't find a, a piece of uh, cardboard that was small enough that didn't have ridges. Okay, one more, people. Oh, I'm digging this. Okay. So then here's my mandala so far. Now, now that I've got that really bold, um, big shape on the outside, and it's green, the opposite of green is red, and I think that will tie in really nicely to the purple. So I am going to grab, oh, my fancy triplet. Shh, I'm dipping it in the water and getting that yellow off of it. This is what I have the paper for. What am I doing? Just clean it up a little, okay? And then I'm going to take this red. Oh, and it's dripping. I was too excited about printing. I put a little too much on there. Um, 
Ooh, I'm going to have it be on top of the blues in between the greens. Now this one has a lot, so I'm just going to take that extra. I'm digging this, people. Okay. Now, you can also let your watercolors dry and then put um, print on top, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm printing the red on top of the purple. And then you get some color mixing happening. So we're getting a little more sophisticated. And we're getting the color happening. So I can keep going with this. I'm so excited. I want to go back to that yellow. Okay. And I'm going to put it above the red. So what's happening is the celery has a coat of paint on it. So it's holding the paint really nicely so I don't have to reapply it so often to the vegetable. Okay. Um, potatoes work well. Oh, a sliced apple works great. An orange does not. Do not go for citrus. Um, beans, green beans I wouldn't do. Potatoes of all kind. Root vegetables, a, a beet or something would be great. But honestly, I, you know, you can take your potato and cut it into different shapes if you wanted to. But working with mandala, I think the circle, half circle, uh, makes sense. And here is our mandala. Okay. Now, when it dries, I might put a couple more layers of colors on top. Um, I actually want to do a blue and gosh, you guys, you got, I got to keep going. This is, this is so relaxing to do. I don't want to stop. And so the green looks pretty dry. So I'm going to put the blue on top. But as you can tell, you can keep going and going. And wouldn't it be great to put this in your window of your house or something as we're dealing with this um, staying at home, healthy at home? And, um, yeah. Oh, what I was going to say, last thing. Here's my design. I can let this dry, and then I might outline the shapes with a black fine line pen. I may not, though, because I think it looks pretty natural right now. Um really digging the layers and I'm I'm enjoying how the colors uh, the repetition will lead my eye in so this is a mandala it is to meditate and think of wholeness um, and peace and I hope you have fun making one thanks a lot bye bye